everybody and welcome back to my channel um we in the world and especially in the youtube world received some very bad news yesterday and um that news is that miss phyllis stokes has passed away um i would like to extend my deepest sympathy and condolences to stephen and to ernie and to all of miss stokes extended family um, to your grandchildren and all who knew you and loved you. Uh, we are all hurting. We're all very sad. And um, it's been a very difficult week for many of us here on YouTube because we've been hearing rumors that Miss Phyllis passed away. And, um, you know, I was just hoping and praying that the rumors were untrue because Miss um, Phyllis's pastor just told us not too long ago that she had rallied and was in no more pain and was doing better. So we all had hoped that she was going to pull through and, and be back on YouTube cooking for us and making videos and giving us love and encouragement. But um, that didn't happen. And it is a very sad day for her family, her community, everyone who, who knew her personally, and all of us here on YouTube for Phyllis was definitely a YouTube pioneer. Uh, she paved the way for many of us who uh, are coming behind her and are learning from her. And she was a great motivator, a wonderful mother, a wonderful wife, and a wonderful cook, and an amazing uh, videographer. So um, we are left with a legacy of many, many videos that we are able to go back and watch and enjoy and, and learn from everything that you taught us in your videos. And um, mostly what you taught us was your love of, of Jesus Christ and your devotion to Him and um, your life uh, living as a Christian. And you set a very good example for all of us. And uh, I know I'm going to try harder, and I'm sure a lot of us here are going to try harder to emulate you. And I just want to thank Miss Phyllis for all that you did for us. I know that you motivated me many days when I didn't want to get out of bed and just didn't want to function. And, um, you know, I'm sad to say that Phyllis and we, um, we had something in common. And that's something that I hope that not many people have that in common with me and Phyllis. And that is the loss of a child. Um, you know, the, the death of a child will just cut your heart in two, and it's very difficult to um, to mend it. Um, so Miss Phyllis was buried next to Mr. Bucky in a nature reserve cemetery called Dust to Dust Green Burial, and it is located in Swansea, South Carolina. Um, Mr. Bucky uh, died in 2019 just a, a short time ago and um you know, he went before her and we know that she really missed him dearly um but we were hoping that she would pull through and continue to be able to make her videos but uh god had other plans for her and um we are sorry that she was stricken with cancer and it was a very painful cancer and um I'm just very sad that she had to endure a tremendous amount of pain. Um, she had made a video about um, making plans for your final resting place. And she had stated that, um, you know, everyone has to die. And, uh, you know, that's certainly true. There's no way we can, can get around dying. Uh, but she and Mr. Bucky wanted to not be a burden to their children. And uh, they didn't want any embalming. And um, so the dust to dust green burial, Miss um, Phyllis did say that they do keep the body in refrigeration uh, for a few days, at least long enough for any family that has to travel from out of town to, to come to attend the funeral service. And, um, and the body is wrapped in a shroud. And um, uh, that's something that's very... It really touches my heart to think that, you know, there's there's the possibility that we can be buried in a shroud the same way that Jesus Christ was buried. Um, she had said that she didn't want to be in a wheelchair or a nursing home, and um, 
Steve did tell us that she was moved to a hospital bed and uh, that she did stay in the hospital bed the last few days of her life. So um, her wishes did come true that she was not in a wheelchair or in a nursing home. Um, it's, it's not a sad thing when we die. It's a good thing because uh, to leave the body is to be present with the Lord. Um, you know, a, a child's death, um, Miss Phyllis lost her daughter Renee, um, and a child's death is something that forever alters you. Uh, it, it alters your soul, your, your very existence. Uh, it's the most difficult thing in life to, to overcome. Uh, it took me many years to, to overcome and, and deal with and, and face and to accept the death of my son, Jeremy. And um, I know that Miss Phyllis had gone through some difficult times, too, uh, facing the death of, of her precious daughter, Renee. Um, you know, you, you're left empty. You're, you're left hurt. Uh, just your mere existence, you know, you just question, should, should you even exist anymore? Uh, to, to lose a child that was so dear and loving and, and just meant the world to you and that you had spent your whole life uh, loving and nourishing and raising your child and teaching them right from wrong. Um, it, it just causes such intense emotions and feelings. Uh, and it's very difficult to work through. But with God's help and uh, help from my friends and family and um, with a lot of prayer, it is, it is able for us to overcome. Um, I have a poem that I want to read, and it's by the, the great poet uh, Maya Angelou. And the title is um, When Great Trees Fall. And I'm just going to read excerpts from it, not all of it. Um, when great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe uh, briefly, our eyes briefly, see with hurtful clarity. Our memory, suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promised walks never taken. And that, um, and that, that really hurts me because I think about all the things that I could have done with my son, Jeremy, and I didn't do it. And I can never, um, you know, go back and, and make amends for those things. Um, great souls die. And my son, Jeremy, was a great soul. And Miss Phyllis was certainly a great soul. Great souls die, and our reality, bound to them, takes leave of us. Our souls, dependent upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened, our minds fall, formed, and informed by their radiance away. So it, it is a sad day. I'm very sad. Um, you know, every time I lose someone close to me and have to go through the, the hurt and the pain and the grieving process, of course it brings back sad memories of losing my son, Jeremy. So um, I just want to pray now for Miss Phyllis, his family, and um, our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we bow down before you now. And we just pray, dear God, that you would just comfort Miss Phyllis's son, Steve, her son, Ernie, her grandsons, and her extended family, dear God. I know that they have been there with her through these past five months that she has been dealing with this battle and fight for her life to overcome this liver cancer that she was stricken with. She didn't deserve it, dear God. She didn't deserve it. But uh, only you know why our bodies are stricken with these diseases. And we will never question the reason why. We will just accept it and know that 
you have our lives planned out from the day that before we are even conceived. You know the paths that our lives are going to take. And we just trust and love you, dear Heavenly Father. And I pray for comfort and that you will give strength to this family and that they will rest in peace knowing that their mother was a great Christian woman and that she has been welcomed into heaven with trumpets blaring and with Mr. Bucky standing there with his, eye, with his arms wide open welcoming her and her daughter Renee welcoming her mother to everlasting heaven and peace. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen.